with the incredible supercell on the 18th turning our trip's luck around. The following morning found us in Shamrock, Texas, where we were presented with three options for the day's chase. Cranberry juice. Good morning from Shamrock, Texas. It is now May 19th, it is Friday, and yesterday was just an absolutely incredible structure show just north of Amarillo. We got in late last night, slept in a little bit this morning, but you know, we have a long drive ahead of us to any of the three target areas. The main one that we were considering yesterday was central Oklahoma, where it looked like storms were gonna fire off just north of OKC and then kind of gradually moved east. But problem is, is models didn't really handle the overnight convection very well, so what ultimately ended up happening is that everything in terms of initiation trended further east, so that means you're getting initiation over eastern Oklahoma and into into Arkansas basically and the terrain is most certainly not favorable out there for chasing so that kind of rules out the uh, that play. Further south we have a big crashing cold front coming through central Texas if we wanted to chase crashing cold fronts we'd be back up in the northeast doing that thing so we get plenty of that living up there so that's kind of not really what we want to do today but a third target is eastern New Mexico and into southern Texas or I should say the southern panhandle of Texas. So that looks like, you know, potentially the play. The moisture is a bit of concern, so no matter what, we're gonna get some like elevated type storms, but hey, you know, worst comes to worst, we go check out Roswell if things start trending for the worse. So either way, we have a play to make, and uh, we gotta start driving pretty soon. I gotta get showered up, pack up all the gear, and hit the road as it's probably about a five hour drive from here to Roswell, so we gotta get, in position. Let's go do it. Four oh four Central Daylight Time. Uh, we have a storm that's initiated east of Kermit, Texas, tracking due east. We're closing in on Andrews, Texas, and then we should be able to drop south in front of this thing. Storm development was taking shape over the Texas cities of Midland and Odessa. This meant sneaking between effectively a rock and a hard place, as hail was falling to our east and west. The only choice was to navigate rush hour traffic to get further south of the growing storms. Time now is... 6.16 Central Daylight Time. The storm that we were on, the Odessa one, has now been cut off by outflow, and the storm that was over Midland, currently over, what's that? Spar, Sparberry, Spanberry? I can't read that. Sprabberry, I have no idea what that means. Um, either way, it's past Midland, and it is coming southeast here, and this is gonna be the dominant storm. Yeah, that's that, that big shelf, basically. Central time. Uh, 
this storm has got a little bit of a supercellular nature to it now on radar. Got a hook echo starting to form a little bit, which is, I can't say I was actually expecting. We got southeasterly flow at the surface here on my back, not much, but maybe this might try to do something, especially with all this happening down in here. What an incredible storm. Look at all the outflow coming out of it now. What I failed to realize in that moment was the fact that the storm was inhaling the Texas dust in its inflow, rather than the dust being lofted in the forward flank downdraft. We were not prepared for the phenomena we were about to witness. This thing's just sucking up all this dust. Wow. This is incredible. Now with two days in a row of successful chasing under our belts, it was cause for celebration. The next couple days looked to be quiet, so we winded down for the night in Odessa with storms not really on our mind. But Mother Nature would remind us to stay on our toes.